Good morning, everyone. My name is Nicole Richardson, and I'm from Authors Press. Today is October 5th, 2021, and I'm gathered here today with Kay Thompson, the author of Finding Joy in the Midst of Grief. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Kay? Hey, thank you, and thank you for having me this morning. Um, I was born in New Jersey, spent 19 years of my life there, and then um, I married my husband, Gail Thompson. Uh, he got out of the Air Force in 64, and so we got married in, in 65. We moved to Bay Area, California, and there I have been for the rest of my life, uh, until 2015 when I moved to Roseville, where I currently live. Um, I have two sisters. Um, both my parents have passed away. My dad was a pastor in New Jersey, and um, I grew up in the church, but um, then when I married Dale and we moved to California, we had two girls, and now I have six grandchildren. So That's a lot of grandchildren. Family. They live all over the country, but <laughs> they, they are out there. I think my grandma has a total of like nine grandchildren, including me. Yeah. So that's a lot. I'm yeah. to ask you a little bit about your book, too. Okay. So um, the book that uh, we're talking about today really is Finding Joy in the Midst of Grief. And um, I wrote that, I wrote first Journey to Joy, but then Finding Joy in the Midst of Grief is a revision of that. And um, it has some extra chapters and things in it. So um, what led me to write that book was just a number of friends who had walked through the two and a half years of illness with my husband. Um, he, I should back up a little bit and say he was a, um, a lithographer, spent 30 some years in a dark, dark room doing field color printing, which led to Parkinson's. Probably found that that chemicals are just the worst thing to uh, kind of eat at your brain cells. And so he had two and a half years of Parkinson's towards the end of his life, and then in that process, we found another giant in our way, which was cancer. And so uh, he passed away in 2008, and I had a, um, a nightly blog that I did for those couple of years, uh, in and out of the hospital, in and out of doctor appointments. And so my friend said, why don't you put the blog together and put it in a book? Like okay so uh so from what i understand it's like your little uh the word not not inspirational but a little um something like that to keep you going after your husband huh yeah um the inspiration to put the to book the, put the books together was really based on my faith walk with jesus and okay i, I see yeah. So, so this book has religious aspects to it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I did not know that. I mean, I guess I should have known that because it says continuing in God's loving grip through loss of a loved one. I guess I should have known, but that, that's okay. So, but but the reason that that's important is that's what helped me understand where God was taking me, even though I didn't ask to be there. Right. Right. Trusting the process. Yeah. I have this little motto that I follow. Everything happens for a reason, whether it be a good reason or a bad reason. All reasons are real. They all exist and everything has a point, purpose, and place. Everything has a reason. Right. Right. So um, for our first question, which kind of is a better way to ask what I asked you earlier, what is the main message you want to get across to your readers? I think the main message is when life is hard, there is a way that we can walk through the hard and difficult times. I facilitate a grief recovery group. Um, this is my 22nd session that we're in right now. And so I always say, welcome to the class that you never wanted to be on or in. And so uh, it's a path that takes you down a different way. A lot of detours into what you had planned. And I think um, I have gotten feedback from people who have bought my books and they said they can see themselves in that their situation through my experience. So whether we have the same religious background 
is not so important as the process of learning to walk slowly one day at a time through the process of grief. And in that process, hopefully they will find that God is real. That's the purpose of my book. So from what I understand through that, it's not, the whole point of the book is not religion, but to inspire you to strengthen yourself. Yes, to strengthen what you believe, to try and walk one step at a time. Sometimes in grief, we tend to want it to be over and done. It doesn't work that way. Uh, some people can get through it a whole lot faster than others. And I think that my story or our story uh, for those two and a half years and, and a lifetime together, we were married 44 years. So uh, that's a lifetime. And so uh, it just shows how when you walk through things together, uh, you can you can muster up anything. I, and God gave me strength and courage and endurance to get through it. And also for Dale, because he said to me, I know where I'm going. I'm not afraid to die. I just wish I knew when it would be. Which, which is a very heavy, heavy topic right there. Yeah. Um, what does a literary success look like to you? Um, a lot of people do it to be recognized and to be, you know, the best author that there can be. And that's not really my purpose. I like to be a good author and tell the truth about what I'm writing and actually my book is a true story, almost identical steps for everything that we did and everything that I did following. Um, my kids have said they were proud of me for putting it together in a truthful, straight way. Um, and I think the success is just knowing that it's helping somebody else. That's the whole purpose of writing that kind of book. It's like a self-help book only from um, a Christian standpoint literary success to you is being able to help others through your writing yes that's a pretty solid answer i think that's a good answer to that question um and that kind of leads into one of my next questions uh what does your family think about your writing they think that it was really good and in fact the new book that i wrote the um oh no where did he go it's a children's book um and it was illustrated by my granddaughter which makes it even more special and it it's a true story of how um, the pastor used the hermit crab story moving from one shell to another at the graveside. And my grandkids all heard it and they're all part of the, the children book story. So um, now both books are available and hopefully, um, you know, it, it would be, I think, a way for my grandkids to connect again to remember the significance of, of what death does to people, and especially as children. Children have all these emotions they don't know what to do with, and parents and teachers don't know how to help them. So hopefully this book will also be a help to them. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree with you that children don't always know how to handle their emotions, and it's not all the time the the adult knows how to help them express those emotions in a safe and healthy way. Right, right. Hopefully this new book will be that, that kind of help. Do you write Finding Joy or Oh No first? Finding Joy. Okay, and how old were you when you wrote that? Is, is this your first book or story? Well, if, if you go back to the original Journey to Joy, I was 64, and then and then um, a few years ago, I rewrote it, revised it, and, and put it into Finding Joy in the Midst of Grief. And it added the, the element of finding joy even, you know, 10, 12 years later. And so, um, how old was I then? I was probably, probably 71 or so. And then I just did Oh No this past year. Okay. To be honest, this is a little bit more of a, a personal um, comment, but I would never guess you're above 71. Never. <laughs> never would have guessed. I thought, does she really want to know how old I am? Um, oh, no. I just, I'm more interested in how long ago you wrote your first book of story. Like, were you a kid? Were you an adult? You know? You know, I was an adult that was hoping to retire within a few years and then life threw a curve at me. 
And uh, it was like God said, okay, nope, you're not doing that. You're going over here instead. So. That, that kind of answers my next question is, uh, as a child, did you know you wanted to be a writer? No, I would never have guessed it in a million years. In fact, when my friend said, because I used to send out my blog, because they all wanted to know how Dale was and what did he do today and how can we pray for tomorrow. And um, So I would send out, you know, what we had done that day. He had eaten a hamburger. That was the first thing he'd eaten in weeks and weeks. And so, um, you know, we ate the whole thing. And um, so there okay. were silly things like that. And I thought, that's not going to make a book. And, but they really, then I would send them a list of things to pray for and how we had seen God answer the prayers, you know, that we had been asking for in the past. So we, um, I thought, well, we'll make a stab. So I rented a house in Carmel for a week and, um, and I went there and I wrote eight out of nine chapters in a week. Some people, it takes them years to write a book. So Finding Joy, is that book a standalone or is it part of a series? It really is a standalone because it was a revision of the very first journey to joy. Um, but then the second book, um, Oh No, Where Did He Go? That children's book is kind of a standalone in itself, but they kind of work together. You don't have to have them together, but they kind of continue the story. So it helps children. So uh, that kind of makes me feel like finding joy is more geared towards adults, whereas Oh No is the same stories in a way, but for children. Right, right. Okay. And uh, JT is the main character in, um, in the children's book, and he's part of the family in the original book. Uh, finding joy yeah I would I would not have read that or I would not have known that just by skimming through and reading through it I did not know that so it's interesting to learn about that um, what is your biggest source of inspiration oh, I think um, I think my biggest source is just following what God is telling me to do and and wanting to help other people with what I've learned, which is why I'm doing 22 sessions of grief recovery, uh, because you live your story over again every time. And uh, but my grief recovery class spans multiple generations: grandparents, parents, spouses, both men and women. And so um, it's just kind of a different, a different way of helping somebody get through the, the hardest part of their life. And speaking of hardest part, uh, what was the hardest part of writing this book, Finding Joy? I think the hardest thing was to sit by myself in this house that I had rented at Carmel. Actually, I sat outside part of the time and I just would say, God, I can't do this. And because it made you relive it as you were trying to put it together into reading material that somebody would want to read from beginning to end. It's not a very deep book. I'm not a deep theological writer at all, but it's just from my heart, the story and the truth of what God has done in the midst of horrific stuff. On the other side of the spectrum, what was the highlight of writing this book or your favorite part of writing this book? I think when you see it printed for the first time, that's a big right. excitement, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Yo. So this isn't one of the questions that is on the questionnaire sheet, but um, how do you feel seeing somebody else hold your book? I, I, it just gives me a sense of satisfaction that I got it from my note ads to the computer to an end result. And I think that's, you know, that's a good thing. It went from in your head to in my hand. Yes, that's good. Good way to put it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And I bet that's a very gratifying feeling too. It is. It is. From the standpoint that not that I I, I don't want to be success, successful in my own right. I'd like to be successful because God's given me a chance and an opportunity. 
Who would you say is your target audience for finding joy? Do you have a target audience? Yeah, it's basically um, adults of all ages and young adults, old adults, um, like I said, from teenagers to grandparents. Um, it, it works well for any adult that's been through a grief situation or lost so, money. So uh, you're saying that there's not really a target audience, but more of a, uh, for people who have gone through a similar situation. Right, right, yeah. Okay, it's for people to bond and um, relate to each other. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They, they can relate to my situation. They can relate to others if we're doing the grief class and others in the room, even though their situation is a little different. They've all lost somebody in a death experience. I just have a couple more questions for you before we wrap this up. Um, where can readers find out more about you and your books? Um, I have a website. It's kthompsonbooks.com. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they can find you at www.k and your name is spelled K-A-Y. Yes. Right, Thompson, and there's no P in Thompson. No, K correct. Thompson Books. Yes. P H O M S O N Books.com. Okay. This is our final question before we wrap everything up, but how do you feel about working with Authors Press? It's been a great experience so far, and um, they're doing a great job um, in helping me find avenues to market my books in. Glad we could help you market your book and hopefully you'll write another one so I can interview you again. Okay, thank you. I have started another one, but it kind of got put in hold for um, the children's book, but there's another one I was working on uh, for Long Hallway. And so we'll see you hear about it. it. Yeah, I'll pick that up and run again. Well, unfortunately, that's all the questions I have for you today. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and it was honor an honor to learn about you and your book. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us either through our website or via our email or our phone number. Um, but yeah, um, have a wonderful day and thank you for talking to me. Thank you so much. Bye.